Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today, no, I'm not bringing you a review of this VW campervan, because this is my campervan, a 2018 T6 Transporter with CMC Hembill Urban Conversion. It's brilliant, but that is a story for another day. Today, I'm going to bring you my review of 2023. Now, first of all, I want to thank you all because now in mid-January 2024, we've reached 81,305 subscribers. And looking back at the past year, or 2023, the most popular video of the year was, perhaps unsurprisingly, the Heimer Venture S, with 281,104 views during that year. Our top viewing days were Tuesday the 17th of October with over 41,000 views. Well, that was the first day of the big NEC motorhome and campervan show in, uh, in, in uh, October, so that's perhaps unsurprising. And the other top day was Monday 24th of April, the day after the National Motorhome and Campervan Show at Peterborough. Now that show moves to Newark on a later date in June for 2024. So if you're looking for a new camper van, make sure you go to that show. It's the, the biggest of the outdoor shows, National Motorhome and Camper Van Show. Now, as for the vans we reviewed during 2023, well, the first test of the year um, down in Salisbury was the Adria Supersonic 780 SL, their new Mercedes-based low profile. Now, it wasn't a good start to the year for me because I had terrible sound issues when recording that, that video. But despite that, I still enjoyed the van. It had great, crisp, modern interior design, sort of thing you expect from Adria now, and a very, very high spec as standard, a lot more equipment as standard than you get, say, on most German comparable A-class motorhomes. I loved the little movable footstool too, that, uh, well, just made the lounge area pretty much perfect. Well, not quite perfect, because the second A-class motorhome, or the second motorhome that I reviewed in 2023 was the Catargo Liner for two, the Iveco-based version and that, I have to say, was my favourite lounge of the year. Such a superb C-shaped seating area at the back, windows all around, massive telly. Ah, oh, if you want a motorhome to go off on a very, very long-term tour, well, that one should be on your shortlist. Well, it should be if you can afford the £244,000 price tag of the one we tested. Uh, nearly as expensive was the third van that we, or I, reviewed last year, and that was the Heimer Venture S. Now, this was one I was really, really looking forward to. Ever since I'd seen the concept in Dusseldorf a couple of years earlier, um, we gave it our Motorhome of the Year Award for 2023, and it is a true one-of-a-kind motorhome. Not only is it based on a four-wheel drive Mercedes Sprinter as standard, but, well, it doesn't look like anything else on the market. And with that huge um, sort of elevating, and to call it an elevating roof, you think of a pop top like in this VW, but that is to undersell it. It's, it's a pneumatically operated, well, it's an upstairs bedroom, and you really do go upstairs to it. And that's not the Venture S's only party piece. It also has that fold-out sunset deck at the back, a slide-out table that just appears from under one of the settees. And the thing perhaps I was most proud of is we brought you a world exclusive on that review. The van came over from Germany for us to review it, and what a, what a vehicle to review. So enjoyed that one. 
And then just a few weeks later, I was off to Morocco. Now, what an experience that was, camping in the Sahara Desert. I was on Bailey's Sahara Challenge too. Now, they didn't make it to the Sahara the first time because COVID intervened, but in 2023, we did get there. We got to camp amongst the dunes of the Sahara in, first of all, a Bailey Adamo 75-4T. I got to ride on a camel, um, drive up through the Atlas Mountains, explore Marrakesh. It was an amazing trip, but the real reason for that trip wasn't Morocco, it wasn't the Sahara, it was to see and to test the prototype of the Bailey Endeavour B62, their very first ever camper van. Yes, it's a conventional rear lounge two berth, but it's on a Ford Transit, which has given Bailey quite a few challenges in making that classic layout fit in the Ford rather than the perhaps more uh, accommodating box of the back of a Fiat Ducato but they've solved those challenges really really well and as a result that vehicle was voted best large camper van for 2024 a well deserved reward after shorts and t-shirts in March it was back to the UK and back into long trousers but there was one plus because just a few weeks later on I was off to the Sandringham Camping and Caravanning Club site, one of my favourites, with um, the two kids and the dog and we were staying in a Remore Killig 9. Wasn't one of our most popular videos of the year um, but at £66,495 it was certainly one of the best value vans of the year and one of the most family friendly with bunk beds at the back. A great van. If you've missed that video, do look it out. And then over the summer, we came to the big brands of motorhome launches in Europe, mostly in France for me. Um, Chausson, Pilot and Rapido were all covered on this channel. But the most popular of those videos was the Rapido launch with 71,860 views. And that review of their 2024 range included the 606F. Very popular layout now with a big front lounge, drop down bed, kitchen area sort of amidships, but then across the back a super sized washroom and importantly a garage area as well. Um, we think that Rapido have done that as well as anybody and it won best drop down bed motorhome for 2024. Still in the summer, I went to the New Forest in the Dormobile Ballintray. And it was great to see the Dormobile name back. I mean, the name dates back to 1952. Yes, there were a few criticisms of the Ballintray campervan, but I'm so pleased that Dormobile have addressed some of those. Immediately after I'd reviewed the vans, I'm getting messages from Dormobile, yes, we're changing this, we're changing this. And that was great to see that proactive approach. I have to say, I also loved seeing the classic Bedford CF and Type 2 Volkswagen camper vans in their showroom in the New Forest. And then after that, well, it was a well-deserved break. And with my wife, two kids, uh, we left the dog at home, but with my wife and two kids, we were off in this van in our little Volkswagen uh, for a couple of weeks in France. And we stayed at Le Moulin du Bel Air, which is um, a Cissibon campsite between the lot and the door nine. Fantastic location, great friendly owners of the campsite, lovely, lovely place and a lovely part of France. But there's no peace for the wicked and soon it was Dusseldorf. Um, highlights of the caravan salon in Dusseldorf this year, well one of the top ones has to be the new Ford Nugget on the brand new Ford Transit Custom. But vying for top slot was also the new California from Volkswagen. Obviously those two compete very much in the compact camper sector and the real surprise was that the California not only was it there as a concept and very much you know we're going to see that as a production vehicle very very soon but it wasn't based on a Volkswagen van it was based on the multivan which is effectively a people carrier and I've driven that multivan as a people carrier not the camper um, since then and it drives really, really well. Really enjoyed that. You can see uh, my review in 
uh, what motorhome magazine of the multivan. Um, in the bigger vans, in the motorhomes, well, one of the stars had to be the Burstner Lissio TD Lounge. Again, it was a concept um, with a slide out, a European compact motorhome with a slide out. So that was a really interesting thing to see and the extra space in the lounge area that that created. Let's hope that that becomes a production model for the 2025 season. Back in the UK after Dusseldorf, we got exclusive previews of two very, very important new models. First of those was the Swift Voyager 4 Series, three models, uh, all on a Ford Transit, uh, Ford Transit base vehicle, all of them over cabs. Um, low profiles dominate in that sort of seven and a half metre motorhome category now, but these all have an over cab bed and for families that's not a bad idea it does give you a more versatile space because the over cab bed doesn't interfere with your living area when it's in use voyager 4 series offers a choice of island single beds or a rear lounge and great value swift does seem to be on a roll in terms of value for money at the moment so if uh, if you're looking for a price sensitive vehicle do take a look at the Swift Voyager. The other exclusive was the new Auto Trail XL. Now that's a name, the XL name was used between 2009 and 2011 by Auto Trail, but these are a completely new range of vehicles. Again, all on Ford Transit, four models, three and a half ton motorhomes between 6.2 and 6.9 meters long. But the key thing here is that they're narrower, 2.24 metres wide. And I think we're going to see a lot more developments in that sort of narrower coach built market in the coming year or two. Since then, we've seen the Bailey Allura, another narrow bodied coach built motorhome. And I think, as I say, there will be more of these because, well, eventually when we move to electric motorhomes, everything is going to have to be more weight sensitive, more fuel efficient, more fuel into, in the wider sense, more, more efficient uh, vehicles. So they're going to need to be lighter, more aerodynamic and so on. Since then, over the autumn and early winter, I enjoyed first of all the Adria Active Duo campervan, little Renault traffic pop top that seems to make a great daily driver camper van. But when I tested it, the one thing against it was the price. Now Adria reviewed that and knocked a good chunk off the price. It looks great value too. And then after that, I did the Euromobile Activa 1, rear lounge, six and a half meter over cab coach built, but with two really key factors. It's got a big double floor for storage, and you sleep in the Luton in single beds. Now that review seems to have struck a chord with a lot of people that have watched it as something really different that really, really works. And it's great to see Euromobile back in the UK, a brand that hasn't really been properly represented here for some time. And then finally, the last review of the year was a brand new name in the UK, Yukon. Now Yukon is the campervan brand from Frankia and their K-Peak is a fully loaded four-wheel drive Mercedes Sprinter campervan. It reflects, I think, growing interest in off-roader four-wheel drive motorhomes. And I think that's a, a trend that's going to grow and grow as people get more adventurous. After all, who wouldn't want to go to Morocco in a K-Peak? That would certainly be on my bucket list if I could afford it and had the time. Then, 2024, what have we got coming up? Well, of course, we've got reviews of the Motorhome of the Year 2024 and the Camperman of the Year 2024. They've been booked and are on the way. We'll also be testing very soon a new British motorhome that I'm going to be trying in the Dolomites in the winter promising to be seriously cold and snowy so you see how I get on with that one. I'm hoping too that we'll be able to bring you some more competitively priced motorhomes. Prices have been spiralling in the market and too many vans now are 80 grand plus. Let's see if the industry can bring us some new more affordable vehicles. I'm not holding out my hope that the price is coming down but at least if they can steady a bit. 
And then there are some really exciting developments on the base vehicle front. Of course, there's the new Ford Transit Custom, which I cannot wait to get behind the wheel of, especially if it's the Nugget camper van. And of course, very, very closely related to the new Transit Custom is the new Volkswagen Transporter. Now, just how different the two are and whether VW buyers will still want what feels more like a Volkswagen tweaked Ford product. Let's see how that one pans out. Then there's the big facelift of the Fiat Ducato. The Series 10 will be out hopefully in the summer. It gets a new front, new look and an 8-speed automatic gearbox replacing that lovely 9-speeder. So let's hope that's still good to drive. And then there's a brand new, all new Renault Master. I wonder if that will see a return of Renault coach-built motorhomes. Now the old Master back in the day um, had advantages over some of its rivals. It was a bit more economical, it had a smooth, comfortable ride. So I'm really holding out my hopes that Renault will perhaps uh, bring some new things to the motorhome market. But I have to say, the most important message of all is thank you all for your support. Thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for those of you that like the videos, those that subscribe. It really, really does help us to bring you this content and keep bringing it to you. Don't forget, if you subscribe to the channel, you will get notified of all our videos as they go online, and that does help for us to bring you this content. Now, I'm just looking forward to some better weather to get away in my van. Thanks for watching.